Okay, we're going to talk about the physical properties of alkanes and cyclic alkanes. Now, physical properties, we're going to focus on boiling points and melting points, and this is pretty straightforward. There's a couple patterns that you have to remember, and those patterns make sense based on the scientific foundation of, of boiling and melting points. Now, we have to think, what makes something hard to melt or easy to melt? Um, it's not the bonds that are present in the molecule. You're not breaking those bonds, but it's the bonds in between different molecules. So the intermolecular bonds. So if we think of an alkane here, here's propane, and we try to think whether it would have a high or low melting point, we don't really look at the carbon-carbon or carbon-hydrogen bonds in here, but we try to imagine what's going to bind two separate propane molecules together. What are the intermolecular forces present? Okay. Some examples of intermolecular forces are things like hydrogen bonds, dipole-dipole, or van der Waal or London dispersion forces. And when we think about alkanes, really we focus on those London dispersion um, van der Waals forces. There's no hydrogen bonding occurring here because there's no oxygens or nitrogens bound to hydrogens. There's no real strong dipole-dipoles um, present, again, because we don't have those electronegative atoms in the molecule. So really we're looking at these instantaneous dipoles that might pop up and be reinforced by uh, a neighboring molecule. Now in introductory chemistry you learn sort of is the longer a molecule is or the more surface area there is to interact, the more possibilities there are for these London dispersion forces. And so that's the pattern that exists when we think about melting points and boiling points with alkanes. It's really the longer the molecule is, the higher the melting point. If we compare something like propane to pentane, we might imagine it might be harder to break apart two pentane molecules because there is more area for these London dispersion forces to form. There's a higher degree of intermolecular bonding between these two molecules that are longer and able to nestle up close to each other and therefore it's going to take more energy in order to break these intermolecular forces. So we would think this would have a lower melting point, or boiling point, and this would have a higher one. And that's what we see at room temperature. We all know propane is a gas and pentane is a liquid. Now, um, when we get and think further about alkanes, we might think about, well, what if they aren't just our normal version, our N version of these, unbranched, but what if we introduce some branches to this? So let's have the same number of carbons, just a constitutional isomer of pentane, and compare it to regular pentane. Now, we've got the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens, we just have this branch in place here, and it turns out that branching tends to um, decrease the melting or boiling point of an alkane. And the reason why is because it's very much more difficult for two of these molecules to sort of get close enough to each other to generate the same London dispersion forces that are present in this more flexible linear molecule. These branches get in the way so that the um, distances between two molecules is increased and therefore the bonds between them are weaker. So here's another sort of rule. Branching tends to increase melting points and boiling points. Now with cycloalkanes, uh, this pattern isn't quite as consistent. You know, the bigger the cycle doesn't necessarily mean a higher melting point or higher boiling point. And when I think of cycloalkanes, I sort of think more about stacking boxes and the geometry of doing that, right? If you have a cyclobutane, it's very easy to sort of stack these molecules 
next to each other and have a high degree of intermolecular forces in a cyclobutane. Right? Now, if we have a cyclopentane, it's more difficult to get these things to form a more consistent geometric pattern that allows for the same intermolecular forces. And so really cyclobutane, even though it has a smaller number of carbons, has a higher melting point, boiling point, than cyclopentane that has more carbons. Cyclohexane is a really great stable cyclic molecule, and it's actually easy to stack these in a nice regular geometric pattern like a honeycomb. So this has a much higher melting point and boiling point than cyclopentane.